Hello, I'm Mark Pollitt and welcome to What is Forensic Science? It seems like you can't pick up a newspaper, watch the TV, or watch a movie without seeing some reference to forensic science. And while we all seem to think we know what it means, I think it's good if we step back a minute and try to figure out what it really is and how we actually uh, do forensic science. In some ways it's easier to say what it's not, and it's not what you see on TV. First of all, the people that do it aren't young and good looking necessarily. Uh, two, they tend to have much uh, uh, more academic background and, uh, and preparation than people commonly understand and see they're all specialists. Very, very few carry badges and guns and even those that do almost never arrest uh, subjects or uh, interrogate them. They are not investigators. They are forensic scientists first and foremost. And crime scene investigation itself actually only refers to the very first part of the forensic process which is the collection of the evidence at the crime scene. Most of forensic science is done in laboratories by lab-coded uh, PhD and master's degreed uh, professionals. Well, now that we know what it isn't, what is it? Well, I think the first thing we have to ask is what science? If we don't understand what science is, then it's a little hard to define what forensic science is. And uh, Carl Sagan uh, made this very uh, good quote on exactly what science is about. It's really about questions. It's about honesty. It's about new ideas. It's about rigor. It's about scrutiny. And it's about criticism. Science is about observing the world and trying to come up with theories to explain what you've seen. And having those theories, having those hypotheses tested and retested until they're proven false. And so science gets its authority, if you will, by its willingness to be challenged. And that's one of the key issues with regard to forensic science. It is first and foremost a science which allows it to be challenged and welcomes its challenge. Next part of it is what actually makes something a science? Well, first of all, it's been defined as an organized study of natural phenomena, meaning that we just don't go out and do things for the heck of it. Uh, we actually have a plan and we're trying to discover things on an, uh, a rational, uh, organized basis. The methodology that we use is commonly referred to as the scientific method. And as I mentioned before, it's the notion of having a hypothesis, a theory, if you will, that explains what it is that you see. You test that hypothesis by experimentation to see if your hypothesis is true, or more importantly, if your hypothesis is false. And an interesting element of, scientific, of the scientific method is that fundamentally, Success is in proving things wrong, not in proving them right. And in fact, there is a notion that you can't actually prove something is correct, you can just prove that it's not incorrect. Your conclusions in science must be based on demonstrable proof. And notice that I say demonstrable proof, is that you have to show that something works a certain way and that there is nothing to argue that it doesn't work that way. It requires you to be a skeptic, even in the face of what seems to be uh, absolute truth. And the whole notion of skepticism is that you're looking for alternate explanations of how this might work. Yes, your hypothesis is proved correct. Yes, it seems to work this way. But is there any other reason why it might work the way that it does? And particularly in forensic science, and even more especially in digital forensic science, it's really important to understand that there is almost always alternative explanations for the facts that you see in front of you. What do we mean by this notion of skepticism? Well, skepticism, as uh, is described uh, again by Sagan, is that it requires 
merely a curiosity. It requires merely uh, some level of concern that what you're seeing is what it really is. And his punchline is that it's the same thing as buying a used car. If you have that level of skepticism, then you probably have the makings of a, a scientist. Now we've talked about what science is, let's talk a little bit about what forensic science is. Well, the root of it, interestingly enough, is the word forensis, which in Latin meant public forum or discussion. And that's why in, uh, in 20th and 21st century, we'll sometimes hear the notion of debate, uh, debating societies, as forensics. Forensics is really a public discussion, a public challenge. And it really comes from the root word of for, uh, a forum. In the Roman times, the citizens of, uh, of a city would get together in the forum and they would debate what was truth uh, in terms of their community. That's the origin of the courts and that's the origin of the Roman Senate, is the citizens getting together in the forum and discussing and deciding collectively what is true and what is not true and who did wrong and how to punish whoever did something wrong. And so our modern view of what the term forensic means is belonging to or suitable for use in courts or the public is really an extension of that notion of trying truth in the forum. The working definition that most of us use for forensic science is that it's any science used for the purposes of the law. And that's a pretty good definition. But what sciences are we talking about? And how is that different from regular science? And we say regular science, we're thinking of things like chemistry and physics and biology. Well, in regular science, we have these theories and we try to explain these theories and we test these theories. Uh, and our goal is to basically extend knowledge and understand how the world works. The fact that what we discover is useful for something is a secondary purpose for regular science, if you will. In forensic science, we take those very same biological, physical, chemical, and information technology theories and facts that we can observe and apply them to physical evidence, physical evidence being those objects which we are asked to examine in order to figure out how it fits into a given uh, set of facts that we call a case. And so in many ways forensic science is an applied science. It's the traditional sciences applied to our physical evidence. Digital evidence is evidence that does not forget, as Paul Kirk said. Only its interpretation can err. Only its human failure to find it, study it, or understand it can diminish its value. And that's really why forensic science has got this tremendous power in the courtroom, is that people understand implicitly that if it's done well, these things are more reliable than human witnesses. There's also the core notion that there are really three elements to forensic science. You cannot separate these in the practice of forensic science. At one level, you, you can't get away from the science because that really is the core of what you're trying to do. And you can't uh, ignore the law because the law not only constrains what you're allowed to do and how you're allowed to do it, but it ultimately is your client. You are doing this science for the law, for the courts. And of course you're applying this science to the evidence which is acquired under the law and whose results are reported to the law. And so there is this triangle or this process, if you will, where these three elements are immutably uh, linked together. And that is really the core difference between traditional science and forensic science. Inman and Rudin in their textbook uh, discuss the, the basic classifications of science, of forensic science. And it's an interesting distinction. Um, you will very often hear, hear the term criminalistics and sometimes you'll hear the term applied science. Well, criminalistics 
they define as the application of principles of natural science, which are chemistry, biology, and physics, and geology, and those sorts of things, to the identification, evaluation, and individualization of physical evidence, which is collected at the scene of a crime or suspicious incident. What they're saying is that it is focused on the evidence. As opposed to applied science, where the applied forensic sciences also study evidence, but is within a discipline-specific uh, forensic context. Now, this isn't terribly clear, so it will help, I think, if we can provide some examples. In the case of cr criminalistics, the, the disciplines that are normally viewed as criminalistics are things like DNA analysis, trace analysis, where we're looking at hairs and fibers and glass and soils. Question documents, where we're looking at uh, checks and letters and uh, other documents. Uh, firearms examinations, which sometimes is incorrectly referred to as ballistics. Uh, and we'll look at firearms in a little bit more detail uh, later on. Uh, drugs and uh, friction ridge, which most of us know as fingerprint analysis. All of these things have in common that they are focused on the particular kind of evidence. In case of DNA, we're focused on the bodily fluids that contain uh, the, uh, the DNA, uh, whereas the trace evidence is focused on the particular elements that we're looking at there. Similarly, firearms focus on the type of evidence. So in many ways, criminalistics is focused on a particular kind of evidence. You become a firearms examiner uh, by focusing on the forensic application of firearms. Now to become a DNA examiner or to become a, a, a drug examiner typically you will have a scientific background but most of your training is focused on applying that particular background to a specific type uh, of evidence. In comparison the applied sciences generally can be distinguished because they usually have forensic in front of some other discipline. We see here uh, pathology, odontology, anthropology, toxicology, entomology, engineering, and psychiatry. All of those disciplines have other applications for those disciplines, uh, in many cases uh, much larger than the forensic context. Um, there are, uh, most pathologists uh, are uh, laboratory scientists, uh, in, physicians who specialize in disease process, not in crime. Uh, anthropologists come uh, in two main flavors, cultural and uh, physical anthropologists, but most of them focus on uh, purely scientific uh, uh, and historical uh, uh, investigations as opposed to criminal investigations. Uh, toxicology. Uh, while you certainly uh, will study poisons and that sort of thing in the study of toxicology, the vast majority of toxicologists actually work uh, in a uh, pharmaceutical context, uh, not in a uh, forensic context. And obviously most engineers uh, are not forensic engineers, they're civil or industrial or chemical engineers. And most psychiatrists, are MDs who uh, specialize in diseases of the mind, uh, do not focus on criminality uh, as their primary uh, means of specialization. But in each of these cases, uh, there are specialties that you can do, or subspecialties really, that make you a forensic pathologist, etc. By the way, the, uh, the odontologists are the dentists that specialize in identification of, uh, of teeth remains. Well, what makes you a forensic scientist? Well, the short answer is a lot of things, but it's collective things. Uh, your training and your education. Uh, most forensic disciplines require a certain academic preparation. Many of them require at least a bachelor's, in some cases master's, and in a number of them require PhDs or MDs. You, once you've uh, gotten that uh, education, then you have to receive training in how to do the specific task, and normally you have to be uh, tested in order to demonstrate that you, in fact, not only have the knowledge, but you have the ability to do uh, whatever uh, forensic science uh, uh, there is to do in that particular discipline. You have to function normally in an environment that is managed for quality and very often meets standards uh, for accreditation, whether they're uh, the American Society of Crime Lab Directors Laboratory Accreditation Board or ISO standard, uh, in, some, in some cases state uh, uh, licensing standards as well. 
that you operate in this quality management environment which has policies and standard operating procedures and where you're required to take uh, contemporaneous notes and you write reports that meet certain standards. Uh, and very often there's peer review, audits, and inspections. And ultimately, what makes forensic scientists so much different than everyone else is that they give expert testimony. And that, in many ways, is the ultimate uh, definition of a forensic scientist. Although, more and more, unless you meet all the things above that, you won't be successful or you certainly won't be effective uh, as an expert witness. Imman and Rudin came up with the notion of a forensic science paradigm, and we're going to look at this in much more detail in a later uh, uh, program, uh, but uh, it's important to understand that they have two core principles, divisible matter and the transfer, and that there are four processes uh, involved in uh, the forensic examination or forensic process. These are identification, classification, and, and individualization, which are really an extension one of the other, association, and reconstruction. Another core issue uh, that uh, has been uh, posited for forensic science is the notion uh, that was originated by a French criminolo criminologist by the name of Locard, and it's commonly referred to as Locard's exchange theory of transference. And he recognized back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, that generally speaking, in the physical world at least, whenever two objects come into contact, there is some transformation and normally some transference. All things, uh, very few things are exactly the same hardness and shape and size, and so there will be some abrasion, there will be some transference from the harder to the softer, um, and there will be some uh, record at a physical level of the contact between these two objects. And this leads to one of the uh, uh, sometimes hyperbolic notions that you see on TV, that a suspect can't enter a space without leaving some trace behind. And to some degree that's true. Uh, obviously, uh, there are limitations on that, but Lockhart's theory is an important one for uh, the physical forensic sciences, but it also uh, has uh, impact on the digital forensic sciences as well. We've seen a number of different sciences that have become, if you will, forensic uh, in this video. And as uh, Tony Longetti, uh, past president of the American Academy of Forensic Sciences, said, um, there's literally no end to the number of disciplines that can become forensic, nor is there an end in sight to the number of present or future specialties that may become forensic. I can tell you that when I began doing forensic science in the late 1980s uh, in the digital forensics arena, that most of the forensic scientists uh, felt that uh, this was not uh, an appropriate area uh, for forensic scientists to focus on. Some 30 years later, uh, it has become so commonplace and has become so accepted that one of the newest and fastest growing sections in the American Academy of Forensic Sciences is the digital and multimedia evidence section. So just as our discipline has become a new and up and coming discipline, clearly there will be others in the future. And so forensic science is an evolving group of sciences, but they all have as their core the notion of science. Well, thank you for listening to this presentation. Until next time, have a good day.